Welcome back. This is section 11.3, Center of Mass. And in your textbook, this is sections 10.1 and 10.2 together. If you throw a baseball, you're going to make an arc. You're going to make a parabola. But if you throw an odd-shaped um, something, like a, like a wrench or a bat or something that's not uniform like a ball, it's still going to make an arc. The center of mass will make an arc. Whatever, uh, wherever the average of all that mass is, is going to uh, follow the parabola of that projectile, just like a uh, baseball would. But what you're going to see is that it will always follow as if all the mass were, were concentrated at one point. So it doesn't just move through the air as though the mass were concentrated at a point. It also spins around that point. So if you throw, say, if you're playing mumbly peg with your pocket knife and you're throwing your knife and the knife kind of goes head over heels, all spinning back and forth and back and forth before it goes into the ground, it spins upon its center of mass. If you were to throw um, an axe, they do that in lumberjack competitions. They throw an axe and try to get it into the wood. The axe will go around its center of mass and that point will will go just like a baseball would go. It would go in an arc. That means that the baseball also is spinning around its center of mass, but because it's uniform shape, it's often hard to tell that it's actually spinning in the air, but it does. If you do special, uh, special throws in the baseball, you can make a baseball do all kinds of weird things by just the spin you put on it. But if you spin something that's irregularly shaped, it's very obvious that that is that that is spinning about its axis. And that axis point is going to be its center of gravity, and the center of gravity is also called the center of mass. If you have something uniform made out of the same substance, often you can mathematically figure out where the center of gravity or center of mass is. If something is made out of more than one substances, the center of mass is going to be towards the heavier substance, obviously, because that's where most of the material or the mass that makes up the object is, and so it's wherever the, the greatest density happens to be. So you can see a few of the, of the formula for a triangle. It's going to be a third of the way up of its isosceles. For a uh, cone, uh, which is an isosceles triangle three-dimensional, it happens to be at a fourth of the way up, and that can all be derived mathematically. So just as a kind of a rule of thumb, it's going to be towards the heavier part. So if you have a baseball bat and you have um, a skinny area and a thicker area, the center of mass is going to be, of course, towards the thicker area, not the thinner. When we were kids, um, we had weebles, which were uh, little little guys that are with round bottoms that never fell down. And the reason why they would never fall down is because their center of mass was so low that they would always right themselves up above the center of mass, so they would never topple over. So what you're going to see is later when we, when we talk about falling objects, things will fall over when the center of mass is not above their base. But if the center mass is really, really low, then most of the time um, they can't fall over especially if you were to have a round bottom where they can stable themselves. Okay, so let's talk about the motion of something about, a cent uh, about its center of mass. If an object like a hockey puck, if you ever have a hockey puck and it slides on the ice, then the center of mass is going to be going in a straight direction. Obviously, if the, if the base is going in a straight line, then the center of mass, which is above that base, would also travel in a central uh, straight line. If you were to throw a hockey puck, okay, so that you have a hockey puck here, bad drawing of a hockey puck, okay, depending on how you draw it, it's going to form, it's going to travel along the uh, parabola. It could, uh, you know, travel like a ball. Uh, you, if you whirl it like that, if you if you toss it this way, it would go head over heels, spinning as it goes. But, your, but the center of mass will always be along that parabolic arc. So here's a slow motion picture of a wrench. Obviously the handle is skinnier, it has less mass, 
the the part that that uh, twists the nut is going to have the heavier mass so your center of mass is much towards the top and then as you go across you can see an arc as it's being thrown just like you throw a ball a very unusual and cool thing is that if you were to explode something if you were to have a bomb that would explode in midair and you so you have some kind of a shell that you're sh shooting that's going to explode in the air the center of mass of the unexploded shell will be the same as when it blows apart. So the internal um, forces that cause it to explode is not going to change its center of mass. That means that if you were to have something blow up like a fireworks, so like you have a firework, firework is just a projectile. You shoot it out of a gun, it goes up into the air, it forms a parabola just like anything would form a parabola if you, th if you throw it. And when it explodes, it's going to come back as if it were one piece. All of the little pieces would have its center of mass still in the place where it would have been had it not blown up. So you're going to get it all kind of arc at the same time. That's why a firework always looks like an umbrella. Because you're, as, it, as it explodes, they all come down at the same as if the center of mass were where it was before it exploded. So as a picture, if you were to have an explosion, like a firework or, or a, sh a shell, as it moves here, unexploded, it explodes, all the pieces will follow the same trail. Now, they may be dispersed, but they're all going to follow the same trail as if that center of mass was still at the same place. One of the coolest things of this section is how that you can put a spin on an object. If you were to throw a Frisbee, just by throwing it with your hand, you would get it to go just a very short distance and it would fall in an arc just like any projectile would. And it would be very undramatic. If you put a spin on that object, okay, so you know how to throw a Frisbee. If you put a torque on that object so that it's spinning around its axis and also being hurled, okay, because you're, you're, you're propelling it from your hand, what happens is you end up with something called a gyroscope where that gyroscope is, is wanting to regulate itself so that it stays straight. So you can throw a Frisbee if you, if you can practice well. You can throw a Frisbee based upon how you make it uh, turn. You can throw a fris Frisbee very straight, and it goes over a long time because it's catching the air. It actually becomes like an airplane, and it's riding on air currents. And so it's not, it is a projectile, but you've added a dimension to it that makes it makes it fly. Uh, good baseball players do the same thing. If you throw a ball and you just hurl the ball, you'll get a nice arc to it. And if your arm is stronger, you can make it go farther. But if you put a spin on that ball, you can make it travel in a way that other that would not be expected. And that's what you're trying to do when you fake out the, the uh, batter. So um, Anything that can be put a spin on, you can make it travel in kind of weird ways. Uh, pool ball player, uh, pool players do the same thing. Uh, depending on where you hit the cue ball, you can make the, a spin on the cue ball that will make balls go the where exactly where you want them to go. So of course it's it's skill, it's technique, it's practice, but it ha it's adding something else. So we haven't really talked about rolling. Rolling mathematically is really hard. Um, the math behind rolling is, is a lot harder than the math behind uh, like an arc, a parabolic arc of throwing a projectile. But when you, put a, when you put a torque on it, then you've got forces going in two different directions and different things happen than you would have expected otherwise. So obviously, if you're going to put a spin on an object, you have to put a force on that object but not at its center of mass, but, uh, but to the side of the center of mass. If you were to kick a football right at its center of mass, it would go with no spin. If you were to hit a baseball right at its center of mass, it would go away with no spin. So if you want to throw a baseball, if you throw it at its center of mass, there will be no spin on the baseball. Or, or a basketball. You make basketball go over your fingertips so that there's a roll in the ball as it's going and your skill can then depend on where you want it to go. You can, you can almost control the ball even though it's away from your hand. So just a picture, kicking it at the center of mass will make it uh, 
uh, accelerate with no with no spin, kicking it below or above its center of mass will create a torque, and then that cre that torque will cause it to go with with a spin. So last question, where is the object's center of mass located? Okay, it's located as though all of the weight in that object were concentrated at one point. So it's an average of where all the weight happens to be in three-dimensional space.